What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mug. Today we're taking a look for our Fluff Hunters episode on an, a regiment of the Imperial Guard known as the Talarn Desert Raiders. This is what they look like on the main Games Workshop website. This is what they look like if you want to spend a little bit extra money and go on Forge World. Got some giant dinosaurs! Oh, awesome! Not, as, not really a range here, you've just got heavy weapons, team, options, and a uh, sniper team. But really, really cool. Unfortunately, for the Games Workshop side, all you get is, like, this model, the sculpt hasn't been updated. Ever. I don't think there was ever uh, a sculpt for these guys before these. I could be wrong, but, I mean, when I think back to my childhood, uh, these were the guys, if you had Talarn Desert Raiders, this is what they look like. Um, so they only come in metal. They didn't convert them over to fine cast. So if you order them from Games Workshop website, you get these guys. So let's look at them and what they are. The Talarn Desert Raiders are from the homeworld Talarn. The specialties are guerrilla warfare, armored warfare, and desert combat. The story of them was that, let's see if we can find the uh, history of the Talarn Desert Raiders. There's some awesome art. Oh, look at that guy. Come at me, bro. Um, da -ba 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 -ba. Oh, it's too hot. The plasma is too hot. So... Like a lot of the worlds in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, Talarn was once a f very fertile, verdant agri world. And then in the uh, Horus Heresy, the Iron Warriors unleashed all these virus bombs from orbit. They didn't even come down to do it. They just sat in their giant spaceships in orbit and just virus bombed the whole planet. So it destroyed all the plant life, turned it into a big desert. Everybody that, had to, that survived um, ran into these subterranean shelters. So that when the Iron Warriors came down from orbit to try to claim the, the world, uh, there, there was all this resistance. What is that? What was that? Uh, so there was all this resistance, and um, so what followed was called the Battle of Talarn, and um, it was known as one of the biggest, or as the single largest tank engagement in the history of the Imperium. So hundreds of millions of vehicles came out from these subterranean places. Uh, the tanks and the like, the transporters, like the chimeras, were the only thing that would allow the occupants inside to survive because the whole world was irradiated. Um, it was totally blasted by chemical warfare and stuff. So uh, they had th these huge tank battles, and the Iron Warriors, being masters of siege craft, were like, let's do it, let's bring it, let's get it on. And um, so the Battle of Talarn is known as the single largest tank battle in the history of the Imperium. They uh, could not, they also, let's, looking here at the sheer size of the conflict, the Talarn people could not hope to face the traitor Astartes in open battle. Instead, they quickly mastered guerrilla warfare strategies. So they would hit and run, they would vanish beneath the sands after each sortie. Um, and in time, the Iron Warriors withdrew from the world. And the people of Talarn were given the opportunity to rebuild. To this day, the Talarn have a particularly fearsome reputation for armored warfare, and their tank crews are rightly feared. That also kind of evokes the World War II, um, like the Africa Corps of, of armored um, regiments that were down there in Africa fighting over the sands. It kind of evokes that, that uh, image of like armored warfare in the desert. So you've got that aesthetic to these guys. You've got the aesthetic that they're hit-and-run specialists that specialize in sneaking up on you and shanking you with your knife in, um, with their knife. In the Warhammer 40,000 universe of 6th edition, though, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit hard for these guys to find their, their niche because as, like, hit-and-run specialists, their, their, uh, fluff, hello, is a little bit more attuned to something like the Dark Eldar, where they would like raid and come in, strike fast, and disappear or move out of the way. But because they play with Imperial Guard rules, they are, which are meant to be for like, uh, you know, massed ranks of like Cadians or, or Death Corps of Krieg or something like that, it doesn't really play well to their fluff. So if you were going to build a Talarn Desert Raider list, um, you would have if you're going for the armored regiment kind of kind of feel then you'd have like lots of vehicles um you'd have uh it would be like ver a very mech army list and you'd have a lot of rough rider cavalry mounted on horses or the awesome reptilian mukaali for stealth 
swiftness and the killing blow. The, the, those are their favorite strategies. Stealth, swiftness, and the killing blow. It's hard to adopt that those strategies to an Imperial Guard list, but um, there you go. There you have it. You could have them as allies. That would be pretty cool. So when you go to the Wiki, Wikipedia or the Wikia for these guys, it tells you a lot about their history, the Battle of Talarn. Um, Battle of Talarn here. Look at this. So their aesthetic is, as you can see, or the way they look is lots of drabs, browns, white, whitish head scarves. That evokes a very Lawrence of Arabia feel to me. Because these guys are all apparently white. Riding a horse like a rough rider. Regimental organization. Um, so after the Battle of Talarn, they develop these regiments called the Talarn Desert Raiders. And they specialize in desert fighting or highly adept at ambushing enemy forces in the sandy wastes of their desert world or any other world. With little effort on their part, they can reasonably give only soldiers to the Imperium's tithe collectors. So because their world was blasted, they couldn't give food anymore. They, it wasn't a forge world, so they couldn't give weapons or munitions. All they had to give the Imperial tithe was soldiers. And so they were a very loyal and... Um, uh, what's the word I want? Like, f religiously um, fanatical kind of kind of world. And so to this day, a lot of the fluff says that the Talarn Desert Raiders are very, very fervent in their religious doctrine to the God Emperor. And um, the, I, I've read in some Caiaphas Cain novels that um, the Talarn Desert Raiders were all a bunch of emperor botherers and very, very religious. Squad composition, so uh, this is a kind of breakdown of their 10-man infantry squads. They're led by a sergeant. Usually one Talarn Guardsman is equipped with a plasma gun. Plasma guns and missile launchers were their, are their favored weapons because it allowed them to be mobile, like the missile launcher can get up and move around. Um, and the plasma gun allows them to do like long range. It's longer than a melta, so it allows them to do long range hit and run tactics. Whereas the melta, you got to get really up close and personal. So you can read here all about the, uh, the the captain and the lieutenant, the sergeants, what the regular guardsmen, kind of what they're known for, what they are, um, kind of their 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 personalities and their quirks and their rough riders. I love all this art too. A lot of this art is really nice. Um, ooh, what we're we looking at right there. Their war gear kind of breaks down the war gear that they have that they had to uh, adapt to um, the harsh environment. So they kind of it breaks down what kind of las guns they use, the amount of charge packs, their knife, frag grenades, smoke grenades, um, their uniform. Kind of talks about what their uniform is the shemar, the traditional headscarf worn by them, um, worn by everyone as a matter of social custom, acts as protection against the worst effects of the twin sun's rays, and in the hottest conditions is sometimes worn after being soaked in water to help reduce body temperature and prevent sunstroke. The scarf also doubles as a dust mask wrapped across the face to prevent inhaling dust and sand. Uh, Wikipedia guys, wrapped is not spelled like that in this context. Combined with goggles, this provides good protection against the worst effects of the sandstorms. Uh, so that's cool, I didn't know that. Flak vest, flak helmet, webbing, microbead, magnoculars, poor weather gear, rucksack, basic toolkit, mess kit. Oh my gosh, four weeks rations? Where did, what? Blanket, oh my gosh, grooming kit. Wow. Um, badges, talks about badges and insignia. Then here you go with the notable Talon regiments, the ones that are featured in a bunch of the, the fiction and the fluff and the, the rule book and stuff like that. Um, 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 you've got one... You've got one guy, Captain Al Rahim, who's the only... Um, I guess miniature that has a that that's a named miniature. All the rest of these are guys in the fluff, but um, this is the one who actually you have a miniature for in the Games Workshop website. And here at the bottom, it lists your sources. Wow, look at all that. 
Whoa. That's pretty cool. What's up, man? Come at me, bro. Uh, Thailand Desert Raider traditional garb. That's cool. Oh, my gosh. So um, the gallery has really, really got some good images here. Armored companies, vehicles. Whoa. Bane Blade. Yeah, so I don't know. To me, the aesthetic of them being desert raiders and kind of like fighting in the sands, hit and run tactics. Um, I don't know if it really meshes well to me with the um, with the like super heavy armored tanks kind of feel of it. I feel like you either got to go one way or the other, but to, I think Games Workshop makes it work. They 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 make them they synthesize them both really well and. Uh, I guess a lot of people, myself included, just say like, oh, you know, it is what it is. And here, of course, 1D4chan, you go there and um, get to laugh about, about it. Yeah, here we go. Basically a mixture of historical desert-based cultures, such as that of the 1910 Arab Revolt and the World War II Desert Rats, while the entire planet is broken into tribes like much of the Middle East. So that's kind of your your feel for them, and uh, Lexicanum is also a great website. Here's Captain Al Rahim. He's got sunglasses on, very Saudi Arabian looking with the sunglasses. Uh, yeah. So that's it. I'm going to show you some some pictures now. These are some different color schemes. I remember seeing this uh, kind of yellow cream with the with the green splotches on it. Not really being a big fan of it. I thought that this was really cool, but then when the more I thought about it, the black and the blue it's kind of symbolizes like night fighting, or maybe even urban warfare. Urban warfare. I does. I don't think it's. Um, I guess I don't know if it would look that great on the board because it, it looks a lot like the color scheme for Death Corps of Krieg or um, a different kind of army. So. One of my favorite things is this blue accent. Like the white headscarves are okay, but I think this looks really, really cool too. And Forge World, oh my gosh, look at these. Like these snipers, they look so, so good. Like they actually look like a what, what, what people would look like if they had to fight under these conditions. The sculpting is so great. The color palette is nice and muted and um, really evocative. My favorite, though, has got to be this mortar team because um, they chose to do a red headscarf for this guy. And um, I think it looks really fantastic. It's a little, let's see if we can do a little close up to get all of the uh, detail. There's like a little, even a little pattern on it, a little white pattern. Um, I don't know, when you get a close up, though, you can kind of see how splotchy these paint jobs are, though. All right. And last but not least, the Muka'ali. Wow, these guys are awesome. Giant desert herbivores. Apparently they go really fast, but the thing is, because they're so big, it looks like they're on even bigger than a Terminator base, like a heavy weapons base. And because uh, this is a, a regular guy, so it wouldn't be on a cavalry base like you would have for your Space Marine bikes or um, even the old Attilan Rough Riders on the horses. Still, what awesome looking figures. Dinosaurs. Oh, I love it. So, um, I love them. I think they're great. And here's some, some examples of Talarn Desert Raiders that other people have painted. Everybody kind of going for the muted desert color scheme. That's what I'm going for, too. Uh, white head scarves, uh, for the most part. And yeah, there you go. So not going to do too much with these guys. I have ordered and picked up some, some of them for really cheap on eBay. This is my favorite, these guys right here. For, and um, I'm going to be doing some for a subscriber of mine, Warhammer Fat Kids, who's also got some and is thinking of building up a little Talarn Desert Raiders force. So stay tuned for that. This has been a little Fluff Hunters episode, a little sneak peek into the history and personality of Talarn Desert Raiders for the Imperial Guard for Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy, uh, Warhammer 40K, rather. Thanks for watching.